And the, our last presentation in this session is um, from Mike Kudlis from uh, A View from the Trenches, and it's a view from the technologist's point of view. Well, good morning. Am I on? Um, I am. Okay. Uh, first of all, thanks for inviting me uh, to uh, represent the technologists. And I want to start out, first of all, by congratulating all the speakers and everybody who's asked a question, because everyone's used the word technologist and not technician. Um, so that's great. <laughs> There's nothing that's more like fingernails on a chalkboard to a technologist than hearing the word technician, so, so that's great. Also, this is actually my sixth presentation this month, believe it or not. I've been all over the country, and nobody's gotten my last name right, so that's consistent too, which is awesome. It's actually cudless. Um, just remember a cow that can't spit, so cudless, and that's how you pronounce it. But over the, next, uh, over the next three hours, I'm going to be talking about a view from the trench, oh, actually 30 minutes, um, a view from the trenches, and I have to thank the AAPM for coming up with this title for me. I did not come up with it. Um, I'm not in the trenches. I'm actually in an arroyo or a canyon up in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico at the ASRT. Um, it does not look like this right now. I just got an email about an hour ago that they got two inches of snow. Um, so knowing Albuquerque, the whole city is shut down and all the kids are running around like crazy people. We represent 135,000 radiologic technologists. Out of that 135,000, there's 15,000 technologists that have a CT credential, but many more than that, as I will show you, that are performing CT out on the field. And just a quick little story. I, I moved here from Florida. I moved to Albuquerque from Florida. Big, huge change. I'd never really been in New Mexico that much. My very first day at work, I drove down this uh, driveway, and a roadrunner ran right in front of me. And I stopped, and I thought, wow, that's really cool. And then right after that roadrunner, what do you think I saw? A coyote running right after that coyote. So I wasn't in Kansas anymore. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, there's two resources I'm going to refer to as I go through the presentation. Um, one of them is a CT consensus conference that we had at the building over um, a course of two years. And another is a CT educational needs assessment that we did. Um, the CT consensus meeting was sponsored by the ASRT and the ARRT, the American Registry of Radiologic Technologists, which took place um, on, Oct on August 4th, 2007 and April 5th, 2008 was a 32-member panel. You can see all the folks that were speaking there. The goal was really to look at the role of technologists in CT. As CT is beginning to expand, what's on the future? What, are, what is it that we need to keep our eye on as a professional organization uh, for the technologists? The uh, CT edu Educational Needs Assessment was sponsored by ASRT. It was done back in 2005 of, um, with a we had uh, 2,000 uh, CT techs that responded um, from across the country. So I'll try to point those out as I go through this, where this, some of this data is coming from. Um, at the top here where it says there's a need for increased education in computer tomography, these are the, the salient points that have kind of come out of some of this research that we've done. I don't know if I can get any closer. Okay. Is that better? Okay, I'll try to hug the mic. Um, where was it? Okay, so first of all, 13% of procedures, but 70% of patients' radiation exposure. I think those numbers are probably changing. This is from a, an article in Radiographics in 2002. Um, but we know, and especially the NCRP, um, was it 160 that just came out? Uh, last year shows you know a huge increase in the amount of CT scans that are being done and in um, in the patient's radiation exposure. We also know that there's increasing number of pediatric and adolescent exams that are being performed. Uh, I think our next speaker is talking about image gently, and we'll probably cover that. Our CT needs assessment showed us that 68% of CT technologists believe that CT education should be increased in every entry level RT programs. Increase because is it there? Yeah, kind of, sort of. Um, here's our 
just table of contents from the radiography curriculum, the very first thing is basic principles of computed tomography. We don't cover a lot in that curriculum. We cover the computed tomography generations, the components of a CT scanner, the operations and processes, and a little bit of radiation protection as it applies to CT. But there's not a ton there. Believe it or not, we have had incredible amount of pushback from uh, educators about putting CT into the curriculum. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in the future. But we, this was much more expanded, and because of the pushback from our community, we had to shrink it down. In terms of clinical competencies or what a technologist in an entry-level program would be expected to do, we only have recommendations. And the recommendation is for three scans, a head, thorax, and abdomen. Now, of course, this isn't for the CT exam, but for the entry-level exam. Now, the ARRT is working on their content specifications for radiography. What the content specifications are is basically the outline of what's on the exam for entry-level radiography. Currently, there's nothing having to do with CT competencies and very little. I think there's three questions on the entire exam having to do with CT. They were supposed to come out with a revision next year. They actually met this year to talk about what they need to do to change. Um, but honestly, they're a little bit nervous because what, they, what the constituents are now telling them is we need more, 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 more CT in the entry-level program. And when they looked through the content specifications and how they really should revise it, the entry-level RT um, uh, content specifications are really becoming more like entry-level CT uh, content specifications. So almost like a limited exposure, or limited, um, what do we call it, limited x-ray machine operator um, program with a lot of CT in it. So they're actually pushing off that next revision until 2012. This is the biggest reason they're pushing that off, is that more educational programs and more clinical sites are needed. It's the clinical sites that's the major problem. Um, and this is something that the CT consensus looked at as well. There, you know, we have to use CT scanners to produce exams, obviously, for patients. But uh, CT techs who need to get the clinical competencies so that they can sit for the CT registry exam also need to get on scanners and perform exams. Students in radiography programs, if they're following our recommendations, you know, there's only three that they have to do, but if you multiply that by um, about 17,000 students per year, so about 34,000 stu radiography students at any one time, that's a lot of students going on CT scanners just to learn how to do a little bit of CT. Radiation therapists are telling us they, want, they need to get on, they need to learn CT for treatment planning. Nuclear medicine technologists need to be trained for the PET CT scanners coming into their areas. Um, currently, there's only four known CT programs in the country, standalone CT programs, and there's no accreditation for those programs. So they range in length from six months to a year. Um, but there's only four of them, and there's very few scanners that are set aside just for educational purposes. The CT needs assessment also told us that 95% of CT technologists received their training on the job. So they didn't learn it in their entry-level radiography program. They didn't go to a CT school. They learned it by sitting next to Bob and seeing how Bob did it, and that's how they learned CT. Okay, there's not enough CT, certified CT technologists in the United States. Um, this is data based, or that's coming to us from the ARRT. So this is 2008 data. Approximately 50,000 technologists performed CT in the United States in 2008. 21,000 of those held a CT certification, 29,000 of them did not. Those numbers have changed quite a bit. Uh, since 2008. In 2009, that number of certified CT, CT technologists went up to 25,000. 
And I just checked last night, and there are more than 32,000 CT technologists that are registered right now. What we don't know is, has that driven down that 29,000 number? Are there less techs that are performing CT that aren't certified? Or are there now you know, 75,000 technologists doing CT, and uh, 34,000 of them are registered? That's something we need to do a little bit more research on. When we asked in the CT needs assessment, how come you're not certified, the number one reason, as you could guess, is it doesn't lead to increased pay. My employer's not paying me more to get it, so why should I do it? Um, the second reason is that it's not required of their employer or their state. Um, I know that's not true of every institution, um, but there's plenty of them out there that don't require it. The third one, which is actually the scariest to me, is that they feel their workplace assessment valid validates their competence. Um, what Bob taught them at the scanner is good enough for me. I don't need to know any more. Um, and I'm going to come back and talk about that in just a second. The other thing the CT uh, consensus conference told us that the, is that there's fewer CT certified technologists in rural areas. And this is the definition of a busy slide. But what it is is a, um, a map of where all the CT technologists are located in the United States. This is in 2008, using these 2008 numbers. The red dots, and this is all by zip code, so our director of research did this, and uh, yes, he's still with us. Um, <laughs> actually, it's really kind of a cool program called uh, Microsoft MapPoint. Um, you can put all this data into it, and it'll make this map for you. But the red dots are zip codes in which there is a certified CT technologist. The, red, uh, the black dots are the zip codes where there is a CT technologist who says their primary job is CT, but they're not certified. The blank areas are areas where there's um, not much CT going on, but there might be a reason for that. Um, having been to this part of New Mexico, I know there's not a whole lot there. Um, you know, the White Sands Missile Range, the Trinity site, which is still radioactive, uh, Roswell. Um, Although there is a very famous person from this part of New Mexico. Does anybody know? Little t What's that? Georgia O'Keeffe. Georgia O'Keeffe. No, she's actually a little higher up there by uh, Santa Fe. Smokey the Bear. Yes. <laughs> Smokey the Bear is actually from New Mexico. Isn't that exciting? It was actually a real bear. But... Um, Yes, he was rescued from a forest fire in that part of New Mexico when uh, both of the trees burned down back in the 50s. <laughs> but anyway, you can see that there's some areas of the country in the rural areas where there's uh, nobody doing CT or nobody uh, certified in it, and that's a, a major concern. Okay, getting back to this workplace assessment validates competence. Um, my question is, can a workplace validate competence? Nobody's going to step out. Well, the answer is sort of, yes. Um, kind of depends on the facility. The uh, analogy I like to use because I like to eat is hamburgers. Um, if you work at McDonald's and you learn how to make the McDonald's hamburger, you're going to do a good job making McDonald's hamburgers. If you move over to Burger King and you, now you have to frame flame broil all of a sudden and you're used to frying, um, you're still going to know that there's two pieces of bread and a piece of meat and some other good stuff in there, but um, you're going to have to, there's a little bit of a learning curve there before you uh, know how to jump in there and do, uh, do a Burger King hamburger. And I probably wouldn't trust anybody from McDonald's to make my green chili cheeseburger that I'm getting fat on in, uh, in New Mexico. So the point is, there's not a necessarily, and, and some of the speakers have said this, there's not really a common lexicon, a common language. So when a technologist is moving from one place to another, and we know that they're very mobile, um, there's, there's not that common lexicon that they can hit the ground running. Um, in some cases, they're going to have to step back for maybe three or four months to learn the protocols of a new institution. The other thing that we're finding is that CT is a core skill, and I kind of touched on this. Um, as I said before, 68% of CT technologists believe that CT education should be increased 
in the entry level program. Um, at our CT consensus conference, we asked within five years, will entry level radiographers be expected to por perform CT? And 56% said yes. And that's really what we're finding is that, especially in the rural areas, people want to hire an RT, but they want to double dip and also have somebody who's capable of stepping in and doing some CT scanning as well. Uh, radiation therapists are telling us that CT simulation is a core skill. Uh, nuclear medicine is telling us that CT is a core skill for them. And then we ask this question, within five years, will radiation therapy technologists and nuke med technologists perform diagnostic CT scans? Of the nuclear medicine techs, 23% said yes. Of radiation therapy, 31% said yes. Um, their argument is that why should we have somebody on the table for treatment planning in CT and this patient also needs to have a, a liver scanned or something like that, why shouldn't we just be able to go ahead and do it? Um, some of these radiation therapists and nuclear medicine technologists are dual certified in CT, so they feel like they should be able to step in and do it on that, on that machine without having to take the patient off the table, bring them over to the diagnostic area, and complete those scans as well. So if you go back about... 15, 20 years, medical imaging was kind of like an oak tree, where radiography was the trunk of the tree, and all the other specialties were branches of the tree that people could branch out to. Today, the oak tree analogy is, you know, doesn't work anymore. It's really more like a banyan tree, if you've ever seen a banyan tree. And just looking at it, it's confusing. Well, there's really several different ways to get into med medical imaging. You can go directly into a sonography program, directly into nuke med, directly into radiation therapy, directly into radiography. And actually, I forgot to put MRI on here, is, is now considered a, um, an entry-level um, modality as well. So all these other branches are still kind of up there, but there's different ways of getting to those uh, upper branches. CT is now becoming a entry-level branch as well. And what we think is going to happen in probably the next 10 to 15 years is radiography is going to move up and be one of those branches as CT takes over more and more. Um, there's things like, I mean, when I was a student, we did a lot of sinus x-rays. I love doing sinus x-rays. A lot of places don't do sinus x-rays anymore. They're all going to CT. Although we have heard some reports that uh, those are coming back to radiography as people are starting to fear the dose in, uh, in CT. So not quite sure what's going to happen, but this seems to be the trend. And um, instead of radiography programs teaching CT, we really think in about 10 to 15 years, there's, there's going to be CT programs teaching a little bit of radiography. Okay, we talked a little bit about regulations in some of the other uh, presentations, but currently there's no federal regulations that exist for CT technologists to be certified or anything related to CT education for technologists on the federal side. There are three states, however, Colorado, Wisconsin, and Oregon, that do require CT certification. But there's still six states out there, plus the District of Columbia, that don't have any sort of licensure for medical imaging um, for the technologists. Um, actually, this is one of them here. There's a, for technologists in hospitals, Georgia does have some rules and regulations, but in um, independent diagnostic testing facilities, there's no regulations. Um, MIMPA was just discussed in 2010 in terms of what's required for technologists. The IIC requires that the technical director or the lead tech be CT certified. The ACR recommends post-primary certification in CT. And the Joint Commission hasn't told us what their plans are yet in terms of certification. But this will all be effective in 2012, so it's coming up pretty quick for us. So. Looking at the CT needs, what is it that technologists really need out there? The number one thing is creating that common lexicon. And I know several people have already discussed that already, but in terms of terminology and protocols, the more we can create that common lexicon, that common vocabulary, it's going to help the technologists. 
And as those are being developed, we're going to include everybody. And, and the team approach has been discussed several times, so I'm not going to go into that. Just, you know, don't forget the radiologic technologists as you're putting that together. Um, the other analogy I like to use is, you know, when I moved to New Mexico, it was so cool, so beautiful, and I had a lousy camera. So I went out and spent $600 on a really nice camera. And the very first picture that I took with that camera was a piece of junk because I didn't know what I was doing. So, you know, as we discuss protocols and as the vendors de design equipment, remember the most important part of that equipment is the technologists that are sitting behind the keyboard. Somehow we need to incentivize CT certification, or I'll generalize that to CT education. Um, federal and state statute is one way to do it. I don't think that's necessarily the best way to do it. Um, but accreditation requirements and at individual institutions. Um, I'm not sure exactly how Mayo has done it, but I know all the technologists in Mayo Rochester are CT certified. And I think it was just a decision that was made. Yeah? Th that you made. Awesome. Okay. Um, so if, if more institutions did that, that would, that would help uh, to drive this. And then bridging the education gap. Um, the, the biggest thing is we need to somehow take the pressure off the clinical area. They're being bombarded not just with doing CT exams, but with training all these people training new CT techs, training students, training um, radiation therapists, training new med techs. Um, and if technologists are coming to them with nothing, uh, they're having to spend a lot of time starting from square one. Um, so we, somehow we need to bridge that gap so that when they come to the department ready to learn, that they have some sort of a knowledge base to be able to do that. And then providing education for those in rural areas where there might only be one or two CT technologists or two or three radiologic technologists performing CT. Somehow we have to get them uh, that education. What we did at ASRT is came up with a uh, CT basics course. This is my shameless plug. But um, also to tell you that this has been our most popular, by far the most popular product that ASRT has ever put out. There's a huge need for this. Um, we just finished it about Probably a month ago, uh, 3,000 technologists have been through this, and we've had 150 institutions that have purchased this to teach in their, um, in their entry-level programs. So, um, you know, it's not perfect, but it's a, it's a start to try to bridge that gap. The idea being that when, it, when that technologist hits the ground for training in CT, they have some of the common terminology. They know basically how a CT scanner works, what are some of the safety issues, and that sort of thing. That, oh, and then they get a little diploma at the end if they go through it all um, successfully. That is what I have. I don't know if anybody has any questions for me. to uh, thank ASRT for all the work they've done in developing educational materials. Um, and recently, under your leadership, uh, we have four uh, free modules on the Image Gently website. And the uh, four and soon to be five CT vendors have also uh, developed these modules. They're in production uh, and should be up in about two months. They're free, uh, downloadable anywhere. Um, and so it'll be nine uh, modules that technologists can assess. So as physicists, if you don't mind, let technologists know that these resources are available. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, we're really trying to shift the paradigm of what constitutes education. Um, for a long time, I think we've fallen into the um, belief that education is only CE. And the only reason that a technologist is going to come and take educational products is because they're getting CT CE for the for the uh, education that they're taking, and that we're finding is not true. That if it's relevant, if it's good information, and certainly the Image Gently um, uh, modules are very relevant for pediatric imaging, people are falling over themselves to come and take that, even though they're not getting CE for it. Um, do you know anything about insurance companies making it a requirement? 
requirement for the technologist to be certified? That I do not know. Uh -uh. Sorry. Excellent. Thanks again to our speakers uh, for staying on time, and we're now on break until 11.